All right, welcome back to Midwest Sports Saturday. Some technical issues here from Weatherford, but we are fine and we are live. We are back on the air, and you know what? Caitlin, volleyball player, turned into a basketball player. I'm just kidding. Get to visit now with Hayden Pretty, and I, I tell you what, we want to just go right into this visit now. Hayden Pretty, who is the all-time assist leader here for women's basketball at Southwestern, you know, in the last four years, I know that we've had an opportunity to visit on a number of occasions. Thank you for coming on with me here on Midwest Sports Saturday because this you look a lot more relaxed today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's okay. my Saturday attire. It's your, <laughs> well, I like the Saturday. This is my Saturday attire anymore. That's fine. But you, you, sh you just look more relaxed and maybe not having, you know, the, uh, the big schedule, the big basketball games on the way. I would give anything to be back out there and be playing again, but it's nice having a life. So. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Southwestern, the women's basketball team here last season, and, and I do want to talk about last season a little bit because, well, it's, it sh should be fresh on your mind, I know. 35-2, and two, overall record of 35-2, and two, a trip to a national championship game, uh, a loss, tough loss in double overtime, the mic just went away. She's not going to talk anymore now. <laughs> so I brought that up. Now, anyway, at, but to open the season, uh, you, you had a loss to open the season. You won 35 consecutive games and then a loss to close the season. I mean, it was an interesting bookend. And if you look at it, and, and you've had a few months now to collect and really look back on the season, talk about what this season meant to you. Uh, honestly, there's just no better way to end – of career honestly like yes I would have loved to have won a national championship but I've told this to everyone who's asked if I had to lose a national championship to any team love it Christian would be that team they have, I have nothing bad to say about the girls the coach the program they're very respectful very humble I know lots of the girls came up to me after the game and were just very humble and um, I don't want to say appreciative but just like they know that that game could have gone either way right. and so um, if I had to lose it to anyone, I could lose it to them. I mean, my dad has that game recorded, and every time I go home, he's like, do you want to watch it? And I'm like, no, I don't. And it's it still hurts. It does, knowing that I lost my last ever basketball game that I'll ever play in such a fashion. But we also, it doesn't it doesn't need to take away from the season that we had. No, no doubt. Well, that's really interesting. I'd, I'd, I'd never thought about that. But it really was, and, and I, now I watched the game on television. Mm -hmm. I was not up there where you all were, but uh, I watched it on television, and you know, and I know you've, you've heard this, probably thought about it, but literally one offensive rebound, literally one offensive rebound, and the game goes the other direction. Now I know, and, and having played basketball, I know you played, having coached basketball, I know you played on a much higher level than I played on, <laughs> but you, you really can't say, okay, well, you know, one play, uh, it's, it all comes down to one play. I don't know, and that one, that was tough because there were just so many good plays from both teams. It's, I mean, no game ever comes down to one play. Anyone who's ever played a team sport or a sport in general knows that, but it's also one of those things where I've played basketball since I was four years old, and I've played in lots of big game situations, and my dad always says to get to those situations, it takes a lot of skill, it takes a lot of talent, it takes a lot of hard work, but it also takes a lot of luck. And in the Central Missouri game, we got that luck to roll our way. And in the Love a Christian game, they got that luck to roll their way. And the offensive rebound, if we would have just grabbed it, it would have been ours to win, but it just it wasn't. It, it just wasn't at that point in time. A great season, a great career for Hayden Pretty, Southwestern's all-time assist leader. Now, you're back on campus. Does it feel like you ever left? Did you ever leave? Um, no, not really. <laughs> different role I don't even really get to come over to th this building all that often so I come over here every chance I can but I always tell all the people when I recruit them is uh, I love this place so much I just couldn't leave I'm, I'm glad that we were able to get you in the building today that's that's a really big deal you're a recruiting coordinator for Southwestern uh, correct I do that and then I also do real estate on the side so really yep I got my real estate license so I'm doing that on the side <laughs> well plug your business then <laughs> Yeah, if you need a house, let me know. Okay, <laughs> so do they call you? What Are you working for yourself? Or? No, uh, I work for a broker here in Weatherford. It's called Green Real Estate. Her name is Christy Green. She's uh, from Weatherford originally, and uh, All right. she started a brokerage, and 
I liked her, so I started working for her. There you go. Okay. Well, I want to give you an opportunity to, to, to plug <laughs> that. That is fine. We talked about last season. Let's talk about career for just a moment then. Now, I've said it twice. All-time assist leader here for Southwestern's women's basketball program, which is a storied program with national championships, national runners-up, things like that. I mean, you've had some really good players to come through here, but you're also third on the all-time list in scoring. Okay, so which one means more? Being at the top of the assist, lead, or the assist list or third in scoring, which most people see a little bit more often. It's usually a little bit easier to see who put the ball in the hole than who got them the ball to put it there. <laughs> um, I would probably say the assist means more to me because I'm number one. And the competitive side of me, like, you know, you always want to be number one. But to be up there with Kelly Litch, Valerie Ferris, Haley Tucker, uh, Michelle Fisher, uh, Jackie Snodgrass, like to be up there with Oklahoma names like that, that's it's kind of an honor. It's kind of a big deal, I think. So. You mentioned that, and let's talk about that really quickly as you are an Oklahoma girl as well. So a good career in high school, how do you wind up at Southwestern? Um, Southwestern was actually the last school that recruited me. Uh, they, you know, most of the time nowadays you get recruited from those big name tournaments, um, like the showcases. I was playing, so my AAU team, we didn't really practice. My coach would just put us in kind of easier tournaments around the OKC and just he would call those practice because we couldn't get together during the week. And I was playing and Coach Anderson's husband saw me play and was like, you need to come out here and see this girl. And from there, she came out and obviously couldn't talk to me, but um, then when I went to a showcase and everything, that's how it kind of happened. But it was actually a husband of the coach that saw okay. me play. Yes, and, and Coach Anderson, the assistant coach here at yes. Southwestern, just to clarify that, works with Coach Music, mm -hmm. the head coach here, and she's continuing to roll along, and another season just about to get underway here. Yep. Are you going to come back and watch a game then? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I, okay. I, uh, so I was at the scrimmage on... <laughs> I was at the scrimmage on Tuesday, and it was a little rough, and people were talking to me when I was coming in, and I was like, I'm not trying to be rude, but I just want to go sit by myself. I was like, I just need to – I won't be at the one on Monday because my little brother has a football game, but I'll be at all the other ones. All right. Well, and that's – and rightfully so. You, <laughs> you need a little bit of time. Again, that's why I'm thankful that you're here with me today. You need a little bit of time to – even to probably process coming back in here and you know knowing you've already had the exit interview you've already turned in the yeah. uniform things like that so well we can get off basketball for just a second and and talk about volleyball it's a pretty good program have you yeah. watched these girls play i honestly so my high school got volleyball when i was a sophomore but they were okay so i didn't really watch a lot and then when i got to college i was like wow these girls are good and they hit the ball hard <laughs> yes they do i would not want to be playing volleyball <laughs> Okay, from somebody who sacrificed a lot on the <laughs> basketball court, that very court down there. Yeah, but that ball hit me in the face. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's a valid point. And it, by the way, it still counts as a block if it goes off uh, your face. No. You just don't want to do that. No. That's not how they, that's no. not how they teach it. No. Okay. Well, an amateur athlete, and that leads me then to the next statement for 2019. You were named as the Jim Thorpe AAU Amateur Athlete of the Year. Now, that is an impressive honor, so let me drop a few names that have, have received that award. And I know you've heard this before, but if you haven't heard this, the Oklahoma Amateur Athlete of the Year, uh, other players that have won this award or athletes in the state that have won this award include Sam Bradford, Baker Mayfield, Jason White, Gerald McCoy. I mean, these are some big names. Now, obviously, all those names I mentioned are, are OU football players. There have been a few more that have played other sports, but... Your name will always be associated with theirs now. How does that feel? It's crazy. I don't even know what to say about that. It's it's absolutely crazy. You know, when I was little, I was watching Jason White and Sam Bradford, and uh, just to be associated with Heisman winners and everything like that. When I told, when people found out I was winning the Jim Thorpe Award, they associated it with like the football award, and so did I. And they were like, "You're getting like the the football one." I was like, "No, <laughs> it's, it's different." <laughs> A little bit different. A little that, bit. No, a little bit different. But still, it, it means just as much to be able to get something like that, at least to an outsider like me, to go, wow. I mean, this is somebody that, with the, the small colleges in our state, representing like that on such a high level. And, you know, for MidwestSports.net, and we, we do our part to cover small colleges as much as we can, to get that kind of recognition really means something. And, and you represent more than just Southwestern. So 
You you have the small college show uh, small colleges of the state on your shoulders. That's, that's all right. You can handle it. I think I can, I can handle, handle it. it. All right. I don't have to handle it for much longer. So, so <laughs> yeah, because pretty soon it's going to be basketball season, and <laughs> yeah. and they're going to move on. They believe are. it or not, they're they going to move on. But your name will always be in that list. So as you move on now, you're recruiting now. Uh, talk about this next chapter of your life, and and uh, where does it go from here? Um, I was telling Doug, I love Weatherford. I would love to stay here for as long as I can, but we'll see where my life takes me. I have no, I have no idea. I really don't. I, I like Swasu. I love recruiting, but in 10 years and five years, I honestly have no plans. So we'll just see where it takes me. All right. Well, thank you very much. Hayden Pretty. Thank you. The uh, reigning amateur athlete of the year, a division two national runner up and by the way, an all-around good person. You also let me before I let you go. You do some work with the FCA here as well, don't you? A little bit, yeah. A little bit of work with the FCA. Yeah. Um, I, my so my high school basketball coach, her husband was Jeremy Timms, who is like really big in FCA in Oklahoma, and so he kind of got me involved in it. And then carrying over to college, it was just something that I knew I wanted to do. Okay, I just wanted to. I was about to say all-around good person. That's part of it, too, so you get to be a part of that. Hayden, thank you very much you. for sitting in with us on Midwest Sports Saturday. All right, rolling right along and rolling through a technical difficulty or two, but we'll keep it rolling here. Again, from Weatherford, Oklahoma, Midwest Sports Saturday, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching. Behind me, we're getting ready for volleyball, which will take place in about an hour and 20 minutes or so. We're going to have one more guest here on Midwest Sports Saturday in just a moment. We were talking about the Division II football lineup. I believe I left off at Lincoln in Northwest Missouri. Northwest Missouri looking for the 600th win in program history. Only 600, excuse me, only six other Division II teams have had 600 wins in the program's history, including, well, we mentioned Pitt State a little bit earlier. That's one of those teams as well. Number 18, Harding at Northwestern Oklahoma, just up the road from where we are here today in Weatherford. Harding 6-1 on the season, 356 rushing yards per game. That's good enough for number two in Division II. Had 492 rushing yards in a game twice this season. So Harding leading the all-time series with Northwestern 10-2 and, and have won the last eight. Northwestern at 2-5 on the season. Hasn't had a winning season since 2010. Now that was back before the Rangers entered Division II. So a loss today would ensure that that streak would continue for at least one more year, looking to pick up the victory against Harding. Number 23, Henderson State at Southeastern Oklahoma today. It's homecoming in Weatherford here. It is homecoming in Durant, although there was no homecoming parade in Durant because of inclement weather. Savage Storm, however, uh, looking to try to turn things around. Storm 1-6 and six, taking on a 6-1 and one Henderson State team. And Southeastern's had its struggles on the line, last in the conference in sacks and sacks given up. Henderson State, by the way, leads this series 23-6 and six and has won nine consecutive games, won the last three this season by an average of 33 points per game. It is Missouri Western taking on Emporia State today. Missouri Western receiving votes in the latest Division II poll. And Missouri Western 5-2 and two on the year. The Hornets 2-5 and five on the year. Here's an interesting scheduling quirk. I found this to be neat from the notes of the Griffins, uh, Nick McCutcheon up there at Missouri Western, with this interesting note. For the fifth consecutive week, the Griffins are going to face a team that is coming off three straight losses. Not only that, but three straight losses to the same three teams, Central Missouri, Northwest Missouri, and Fort Hayes State. Today's opponent, Emporia State, has done that as well. So Emporia State 2-5. and five. Missouri Western, 16 different Griffins have scored touchdowns this season. 20 of them on the ground, 20 of them through the air, and one of them a kickoff return. So it's an incredible balance. 16 different players with a score so far this season. We continue with Division Two for just a little bit longer here as we await our final guest of the day, Nebraska Carney. With a big win last week at Northwest Missouri, over Northwest Missouri, at Fort Hayes State today, both teams are 5-2 and two coming in. Now, Kearney with 327.1 rushing yards per game. That's third in all of Division II. Fort Hayes State opened the season with two losses, has won five straight since then, leading this all-time series 34-29-1. and one. 
has won seven straight against the Lopers, and the Tigers have won nine of the last ten, again having won five straight games right now. Sophomore, redshirt sophomore quarterback Chance Fuller putting things together now with 22 touchdowns on the season. Last year, one of two games uh, in which five Fort Hayes State field goals were made. This one, 29-26, a final in double, double overtime as Hayes beat Kearney. A couple more games on the Division II lineup. Southern Arkansas receiving votes in the D2 poll at East Central today. Truman receiving votes in the D2 poll at William Jewell today. And also games of note today. Uh, Central Oklahoma at Washburn. It is Lindenwood at Quincy. Missouri s and taking on GLVC leading Indianapolis. Missouri Southern at Northeastern State. Wayne State at Mary. Southwest Baptist at McKendree. And Shadron State at Dixie State. We're going to go ahead and invite our final guest of the day to come on up here. Uh, we can get our play-by-play announcer, one of two for the day, who's going to be calling some Division II football. And we bring in Stephen McTeer. Stephen. Hey, Joey. Good to see you. Man, I appreciate you coming back. Absolutely. Uh, I believe that you are our first guest to make two appearances in a single that's, season. That's what Doug Self told me. So, so making history. All right. And, and if Doug Self said it, it's right because he knows his stuff. True. He absolutely knows his stuff. Well, it's homecoming today. And, again, Stephen McTeer, the play-by-play announcer for the Southwestern Bulldogs in your second season here with Southeastern. The Bulldogs started off the year pretty well. We're going to we're gonna transition. We'll talk volleyball again here in a moment since that's what's going on behind me right now, Southwestern and Henderson State. But it's Arkansas Tech in town. And the Bulldogs won two games to open the season. This is the opposite of Fort Hayes State. I was just talking about the Tigers. <laughs> oh, the man. Tigers lost two to open the season and won five cents. And their last one they won was over my alma mater. Oh, was it really? And, and Doug Self hit. That's his alma mater at Fort Hayes, <laughs> so he made sure to remind me of that in Searcy last weekend. So Very yeah. good. Well, I, I, great. I had forgotten about that. I did know that I had forgotten about that. Well, here in Weatherford, it's been the opposite direction, unfortunately, for yeah. the Bulldogs. Won the first two and have lost five cents. What's happened? I think, you know, part of it is that what the Arkansas schools do so well is run the football, and that just so happens to be defensively what is kind of our weakness. And, I mean, we've had a really tough stretch. I mean, Harding and Washita in four weeks, all six Arkansas schools right in a row. And the way they run the ball and, and the way they're so physical has – given us a lot of challenges couple that with a whole lot of injuries at one point we were playing our eighth and ninth string linebackers other those kids aren't capable but that's not the personnel it's not ideal it's not so i think it's just been a perfect storm of of adversity that they faced and really really good teams granted they've showed flashes they scored the last 14 against harding took wash to the brink we were up 21 to 20 in the fourth quarter so it's been slow starts it's been it's just been a combination of things I think that now the coaches this week have realized, okay, you know what? We need to just score points. They've had a plan going into every game. They want to run the ball early in the possession. They want to get yards on first and second down on the ground. That hasn't happened. And I think this week is when they finally realized, okay, we just need to score points however we can get them. Sometimes you just have to grow off script a little bit. I think that's kind of the plan, and I think that's what they did early on. I think they realized that Tyler Marr could throw the ball on his run pass options, and they've connected on some big plays. Jared Rayburn's one of the best receivers in the conference. I think we're more skilled, and we're certainly healthier at the wide receiver position as we're down now the two guys that had started the most games at running back. So we're kind of down to our third and fourth string running back. So I think at this point it's where you're healthy, and it's what got you wins early on in the season. Speaking now with Stephen McTeer, the play-by-play voice of the Southwestern Bulldogs. And let's let's talk about Rayburn and Marr for just a moment. Rayburn with six touchdowns, receiving touchdowns on the year. Uh, that's among the top three in the Great American Conference. He's been able to be at least uh, some kind of right spot there on the offense when Marr's been able to connect with him. And it's a lot of that run-pass option stuff, and that's one of the first options is Jared Rayburn. It's not so much that he's catching a lot of balls over the top behind defenses. It's that he finds little pockets of space, and he's so skilled after the catch that he can make a guy miss. And when he's taken on like a strong safety over the middle of the field, there's not a lot of guys that can bring him down. He's averaging something like 19 or 20 yards a catch, and he's now eighth in Swasu history in the D2 era in touchdowns. So he's putting up numbers, even though we've lost five straight, he's putting up some historic numbers. And I think that's kind of getting lost in the final score. 
But he's that security blanket. It's not the tight end for Swasu. It's Jared Rayburn. When Tyler Marr needs a play, when he's got to find someone to go to, it's going to be Jared Rayburn. Southwestern taking on Arkansas Tech here today for homecoming. And Arkansas Tech coming in with maybe a little bit of momentum. Midwest Sport Saturday was in Russellville a few weeks ago and uh, saw Arkansas Tech taking on Southern Arkansas. And I'll tell you, Stephen, that there were times the, the Wonder Boys had opportunities in yeah. that game and just were not able to capitalize on them. And, and the Mule Riders came away with another victory. And it looked probably bigger on, on you know the numbers after the fact on paper than what it felt like there in, in Russellville. Now with a win last week, Tech comes in with a winning streak. It's one game, but it's one, one in six. It's so one. I think I think they figured out who they are. They've played three quarterbacks a lot this season. I think Mason Cunningham is now the guy. He started the last few. They run the ball really well, like every school in Arkansas does. And I think that's I think they found their identity in that. And they're not asking their quarterbacks, whoever it may be, whether it's Manny Harris or Burcham or Cunningham. They're not asking them to throw 35 times a game, which was kind of what happened early on in the season. And then it's a misfortune. Like you said, they, they were 14-14 with Southern Arc in the fourth quarter. We got blown out by Southern Arc. Uh, they took uh, Monticello to the brink. They're, they're a good team, but the results haven't been there. And I think now that they figured out who they are and they found an identity, that showed in the win over Northwestern. And they also, uh, Trey Chisholm, that defensive tackle, right. uh, he scares me, quite frankly, and he <laughs> should, and he probably scares the entire defensive line. Uh, he's got as many sacks himself in the last two weeks as we've got in the last four. So they're, I think, going to be a tougher challenge than their 1-6 in six record right. would suggest. And, and that is part of, of not only finding yourself over the course of the season, you mentioned a little bit earlier, staying healthy. Yeah. That, that also, I mean, this is week eight, so it is – it is a different team now than it was in camp, whether it be health issues or maybe just coming into, into its own. So records being what they are, 2-5, and 1-6, and six, they just have to get out there and make something happen on the field, both teams today. I don't think there's anything to lose for either of them. You know, for, for Swasu, you've got winnable games from here on out. You know, you look at Harding and you look at Washita. If you win those games, that's great. That's not a game that you go into expecting to win. But... Tech and then Southern Nazarene next week, OBU and Northwestern to finish it out. Those are games that are going to be on paper pretty darn close. So you have a chance to win your last four. I think at this point, if the Bulldogs can give themselves a shot in the fourth quarter, that's more than they've gotten every game in this losing streak save for one. So that would be a positive to work from. All right. Let's uh, transition just briefly to a couple of other sports with you. Uh, have you had an opportunity to see these girls behind you play this yes. season? Yeah, more, more than a couple of times. I actually got to watch them last week in Searcy at Harding because football played at Harding. Yes. And they played just before that. So we got to watch a couple of sets. I called one of their games when Northwestern came to town. Those wins always feel a little bit better for some reason. <laughs> they are as deep as a team as Josh Collins has had. They're incredibly talented, but they did not play like they knew what they were doing for the first part of the season. They weren't very confident. They weren't very loose. Everything was just new. After that Northwestern game, and they blew them out, they have turned a corner. They've had, they haven't lost a conference match since then. Macy Morgan is an absolute force. Caitlin Dillon's one of the best defensive players in the country. This is the group that was picked first in the GAC, not the group from the first half of the season. I think that's definitely true. Well, and they'll get it. They'll get another tough test today against Henderson yes. State. The Reddy's very, very good, and then they get the uh, the return game. For Oklahoma Baptist, that's the last match they lost. And this Oklahoma Baptist team has only one loss in the conference, and so really in the driver's seat to take the regular season title and get a top seed in the tournament is OBU. They have to come to Weatherford on uh, Thursday, five yeah. days from now. If they're, at least at one point, they were one of the hottest teams in the country. They'd won like 11 or 12 matches yes, in a row. Yes, I think they, they had were, 12. They were unbelievable. And we went to Shawnee before we had kind of turned that mental corner. And so I'm really interested to see the differences in our team going into that game. Because with so many newcomers, I think they went into it looking at their winning streak and thought, okay, how are we going to pull this off? Now I think they know that they can beat them if they play well. So that has a chance to be one of the matches of the year, I think, here on Thursday. Well, you get that, and then we're not that far removed from another sport that you do call with regularity, yeah. and that is the basketball season getting ready to get underway here. Uh, the Southwestern men picked 12th. 
in the conference. Southwestern women uh, not picked at the top this year. That's yep. Harding. But still, it's a, it's a team that returns a good number of players. Obviously, some of the big names, and we just got through visiting with Hayden Pretty. Haley Tucker not here as well. But uh, a team that does return quite a bit from last year. I think I think Harding being picked first was I have no issues with that. Harding's going to be outstanding. They're okay. going to be so hard. To I'll beat. go on record as saying I agree with that entirely. That's I yeah. think that's that's how I would have picked it. They bring everybody back. Kelly Lampo is going to be one of the front runners for Player of the Year in the conference. They're really good, but you know, not having Hayden and not having Haley is going to be tough. And I think it goes well beyond the scoring and the shooting. Close games at the end. Who takes over? I don't think we know that rebounding the ball Hayden Haley were tremendous rebounders who steps into those roles another good question we're gonna have to find out but what they bring back is a ton of speed they bring back the style the chaos defense which took them to a national title game exactly and you know they're probably going to be faster this year all four freshmen that are coming in can flat shoot the ball again we're probably going to be top 10 in the country in threes attempted like we have been the last five or six years they're going to be a fun team to watch. I, I think the question is when and not if. When do they figure out how they can play as a group without Haley and Hayden? I don't know how long that's going to take. It may, it may take four games. It may take 14 games. But when they get it figured out, they're going to have a chance to win the conference, I still think. And when you get to Bartlesville, who knows? But this team still has a chance, I think, to win 20 to 25 games this year. The Great American Conference postseason tournament in Bartlesville for one more year. Yeah. Last year wasn't the swan song after all. They're going to yeah. go back for one more season for the GAC. Stephen, you have a ball game to call, but uh, it's a little ways from now. Kickoff tonight That's at five thirty. I don't know what. I, which, here's what's great. I just got done at soccer. I was watching Swasu soccer. I get to come watch the volleyball team, and as soon as volleyball's over, I get to go to the football game. There you so go. So the spacing is perfect for it's me. It's a full day of sports. Thank goodness. That's what people like us live for, right? Yeah, this is exactly <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted to do, is just go from field to court to field throughout a Saturday. Well, Stephen, thank right. you so much. Thanks, I appreciate you taking Absolutely. time with us again today on Midwest Sports Saturday. Thanks for having me. And we're going to wrap things up, but we'll do it like this. We'll run down the NAI football schedules because there are some good – Good games on tap today, and I have some more news here. We may try to get to a couple more things here. We'll see. Number one, Morningside at Dakota Wesleyan. Morningside at the top of the NAIA. 61 points per game, nearly 600 yards per game. Third down conversion, 57.1%. Uh, this is Morningside. This is the Mustangs that are now 6-0, and 21 consecutive wins for Morningside. Kansas Wesleyan, number two in the country at Avila. That is going on today. The Coyotes are 7-0. and Don't underestimate Kansas Wesleyan. That's just a shout-out out there for anyone listening. Don't underestimate the Coyotes at Avila today. Avila 4-2, and lost the first two, and has come back with four consecutive wins. So the Eagles starting to fly high. This could be a very good game. Doan is at Northwestern today, and the Red Raiders are 6-0 and on the year. Tyson Kuma with a 61.0 completion percentage. 14 touchdowns and four interceptions. It is Benedictine hosting Central Methodist today. Benedictine reeling a little bit, 5-2 and two on the year. But again, a rushing game uh, with a couple of players in Stewart and Nyhart that were dinged up. And when those players come back to full speed, this is a team that could make some noise in the playoff, but need to win some games to get into the playoffs. And right now, Benedictine needs to pull off some victories, see if he can get an at-large bid. Evangel. Number 10 in the country at Mid-American Nazarene today. Evangel 6-1, holding opponents to under 13 points a game. Number 21, Baker at Missouri Valley today. Baker at 5-2, got a big win over Mid-American Nazarene 49-20 last week. Texas Wesleyan at number 22, Langston today. Langston dropping down the poles a little bit after the loss to Ottawa of Arizona. And by the way, that spirit group, be watching for them. This is a team in its second season that very well could make some noise in the playoffs in the NAI this year, sooner maybe than later. Waldorf at number 20, 25 in the NAIA rankings now, taking on and hosting presentation today. The Warriors are 5-2 on the year. Bo Joseph, 228 yards passing per game. He has 20 touchdown passes. That's in the top five in the NAIA. Some other games on tap today, but let's go ahead and see... 
Now let's go to some other news here. We talked about Kearney. Let's look at uh, the other news throughout the Midwest region and wrap things up here. Kearney in volleyball, 22-0, seventh straight sweep. Got that against Central Oklahoma on Thursday. And today they take on Newman at Newman, which Newman was winless before picking up a win in uh, the last uh, last match. So Newman now 1-22 on the season. Carney 22 and 0 on the year. Henderson State, the team behind me, rallied on Tuesday to win a five-set match down 0-2 against Christian Brothers. And I talked about Courtney Bolf. She had a 20-kill, 20 22-dig performance in the win. Seven-game win streak snapped by Northwestern on Thursday night. So we'll see how the Reddies play today and see if they can get another win streak going against this Southwestern team. Morgan Nash for Missouri Southern posted her fifth triple triple double of the season for the Lions volleyball and a four set win over Newman. Nash had 13 kills, 11 assists, and 11 digs. In NAI volleyball, Northwestern Iowa remains undefeated, 23 and 0 with a sweep of Jamestown on Monday. In men's soccer, Columbia College 2 and 0 got the win or excuse me, got a 2-0 win over St. Louis College and that was that extended their win streak to 15. So the Cougars now with a 15-match winning streak, and that is the longest in school history. Columbia College, number two in the country. And in golf, Missouri St. Louis's Emma Thorngren won her second tournament this season, her fourth tournament overall playing for the Tritons. So that's news. That is football. That is volleyball. And this has been Midwest Sports Saturday. Again, thankful to get to be here in Weatherford today. Volleyball to take place behind me. First serve in right at an hour here from the Pioneer Cellular Event Center. I want to give a shout out to all the folks who were with me today, to Josh Collins, to Caitlin Dillon, to Hayden Pretty, to Stephen McTeer. Thanks to Doug Sell for all he has done behind the scenes. And I also want to say thanks to Jake McWilliams, who's been running my board today. I appreciate him coming up and being with me, making the trip to Weatherford today. We'll find out a little bit later where we're going to be next Saturday. In the meantime, it's been a fun ride. Don't forget, homecoming football kicks off today from Weatherford, Arkansas Tech, and Southwestern at 530. Behind me, it's Henderson State and Southwestern. Please be sure and watch tomorrow on Midwest Sports Now. We'll have our NAI football primetime five, and we look forward to seeing <coughs> excuse me, what those teams are going to do to get those performances in there. We will also have another live guest this week on Midwest Sports Now. So be, please be sure to watch this channel. And also, please be sure to like and to share and to subscribe to this channel. We would appreciate that greatly, Midwest Sports Net. Again, for Jake McWilliams, I'm Joey McWilliams. God bless you, and have a great day.